Today we've recruited the help of our expert builder, Rerux, here. Very good. He's going to help us build a Faraday cage. Stick around to see what that is. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Mike. I'm the Provident Prepper Junior. I'm his son. And I'm, and I'm Mike, and I'm the Provident Prepper Junior Junior. And he's the That's boss right. today. We're building a Faraday cage. The reason why? Because there is a risk. It might be small, but if there is a big solar flare, or if they, it could even be a terrorist opportunity, if you detonate a nuclear weapon high enough in our atmosphere, it could send out an electromagnetic pulse that fries everything that runs on what, Riker? Computer-controlled chips. So what is that stuff? What stuff runs on a computer-controlled chip? Like TVs, smartphones, androids, iPads. Even light bulbs. Pretty much everything, almost everything that uses electricity nowadays is controlled by a computer. And it could all be done in an instant if something like this happens. This box will protect the stuff we put in there from such an event so that we have some emergency supplies if that were ever to happen. So here are the supplies we have. We got some plywood and also we'll put a materials list in here. We got some plywood and some two by twos, a staple gun. You, we're going a little bit more fancy on this. You could build it pretty simply. We're just gonna show you what we're doing today with this. So stick around. So one of the things that got me thinking about doing this is a book that I recently read called One Second After. It's by William Forston. And the premise of this book is that there is a terrorist attack and they detonate nuclear weapons up high in our atmosphere and the entire United States loses all of its ability to run on computers. Now, you might not think that a lot of stuff runs on computers, but literally everything we have that plugs in almost runs on some sort of a computer chip that could be affected by an event like this, down to your LED light bulbs that will not work if this were to happen. Great book, if you wanna read it, check it out. It's, it's very eye-opening into the possibilities of what could happen, and Newt Gingrich is the one who does the forward on this, and then there's a couple of army generals that, that chime in as well and say, this is a real threat, it could actually happen. And it, it doesn't even have to be just a, a terrorist threat, a strong enough solar flare could do the same thing, and it has done and messed stuff up before. So this box is going to protect our livelihoods and some of our most sensitive electronics that we could rely on in the event of some event like this happening. So dad, what materials are we using for this? Great question, bud. The first thing that we're gonna need, we got a four foot by eight foot sheet of half inch particle board and then we cut it up into these smaller pieces. You can do whatever dimensions you want as long as the fabric you're going to cover it with is big enough. And then we got two by twos so that they'd be lightweight but still provide some structure to the box. And then we're also gonna use a staple gun here so we have some extra staples and some wood glue. And then the other stuff is just our tools. Like we have some speed squares and clamps and razor blades and tape measures and scissors. Really, that's all you need. Now, we're making this out of wood. There's other things that you could make it out of as well, though. Sure, you can make it out of OSB. You can make it out of even cardboard, a, a big cardboard box. Uh, some of the liquor stores have heavy-duty cardboard boxes. Um, it can be basically made of all kinds of things. Um, this is going to be very sturdy. The others may not be quite as sturdy. But whatever works for you, whatever you can do reasonably is going to make a difference. And let me be clear, the box itself will not protect your electronics from an EMP or a solar flare. But what we're going to add to the box later is this fabric. This reflective metallic fabric is going to repel any of that damaging electromagnetic pulse waves from, from messing up electronics. Whatever's inside the box will be protected. That's the other supplies that you'll need is a roll of this conductive fabric that we'll have a link for later as well as some conductive tape. This is kind of hard to find, but we have a great website you can go to later to get this stuff. What, are, what is the first step to this? So we're gonna take our wood and we're gonna start building. So let's start building, you ready? Let's yeah. build this thing. All right, let's build. As you can see, we now have the box built. It's time now to wrap it. So tell us how we're gonna do that. Well, first of all, let me say, the box is not the important part. That's why we didn't show you how to build a box, because like we said, you can use any box, any cardboard box. I just built this out of wood, so it'll be a little more durable. But once we have this box built, or a cardboard box, whatever box you wanna use, 
It is now time to wrap this with the, uh, the foily type fabric. So we're gonna start with the bottom. So we're gonna flip this thing over and set it on its top here. Don't mind the tools all over. So we're gonna get our first piece of fabric here. Oops, that's not the first one. All right, so we have our first piece of EMP proof fabric. We're gonna take it. And now the key here is we don't put holes in this to fasten it, we tape it. And that's what they include this conductive tape for. Comes with this roll of conductive tape. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go around, we're gonna smooth it out nice and flat, and then we're gonna fold it over the corners. And we, we want this fabric to overlap everywhere. There can't be any gaps at all. All needs to be sealed either with this tape or with this fabric, and then everything's blocked out. So here's the time lapse. We're gonna get started on that now. We're done, now, now let's show you how it works. All right, so we have our box here. And what we did is we made it have a really nice tight seal. Okay, so you can see the lid here overhangs and that th this bottom part slides really tight into the box here. It needs to be a tight seal. So it, it takes a little bit of, of uh, finagling to get this lid on here. And then it's a nice tight, you gotta push it down to get it on, okay? And that's important that it's a tight seal like that, otherwise you won't get the shielding that you need. So let's take this box and move it down so that we can show the, our viewers what we're doing. We're just gonna set this on some stools so you can see better. And we have a tester that we're gonna use to see how effective this box is. So Dad's gonna tell us about this Faraday cage tester that we have here. Take it away, Dad. Okay, so this Faraday cage tester was developed by Arthur Bradley. Uh, he's a PhD and he has done a lot of research and is an expert on EMP. So he developed this and this is sold through um, Faraday Defense. And basically this is two two-way radios, one in here, one there. And if I push uh, this button, it makes a really loud, obnoxious noise. Really obnoxious, but we want yeah. it to be loud, we want it to be obnoxious so that we can hear it. And the, the beauty of this thing is you can use, using this attenuator in here, you can go all the way from zero, which doesn't make any sense to test it for zero because that means there's no, no protection, all the way up to 91 dB. And now typically 50 dB is considered um, adequate for EMP protection. So we can cover that whole range using these buttons. Um, so we just put this in the box and we have the other radio about two feet away and we can tell if, if that is uh, doing its job. In this case, we actually got to the full 91 dB. So we have a, a great Faraday box here. And, uh, and the fabric that is sold through Faraday Defense is awesome. It works really good. Really and the good. tape, the supplies, they're excellent. So if you want a good supply store, to get your own Faraday cage built, check them out, Faraday Defense. Yeah, and we'll, we'll leave a link in the description so you can find these things. But this is just really a great way for us to be able to test because I've never been able to know, okay, is this Faraday cage good or not? And now we have the ability to test that. And one of the reasons why I wanted this so big is so I could put like my Jackery power stations in here and all my two-way radios. In my opinion, if this were to happen, one of the most important things we'd lose is communication, the ability to communicate. So that's the stuff that I'm gonna put in here. It needs to be big for my Jackery power stations and some other things, but you could get a small one of these just for like two-way radios if you wanted to, whatever. So let's go ahead and test this out. We've got this, this tester set to 60 dB, which is more than the recommended amount for an EMP event. So we're gonna put the lid on here. We've got this all snugged together. We're gonna get this lid snugged on. It's a tight fit and it's supposed to be good. Yeah. Okay. And now we're just going to activate this radio. If we hear any squawking, that means it's no good.
and not a squawk from it. So this box right now, as is, has 60 dB of shielding from an EMP event, which is probably way more than adequate for anything that we might encounter. Like, I, like Dad said, we've had this up to 91 dB of shielding, so it does a really good job. And you could improve it even more if you tape the seam of your box, which would make it kind of a pain to get in and out if you need to get in there a lot. But if you tape it, it'll be even better. So really great products. We think they do a great job. We've tested it. The testers confirm that. Good stuff. Now for the question of the day. Are your electronics protected? And if not, what are you going to do about it? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.